Hello, my dears. Welcome to another episode of the Property Management Show. This is going to be a good one because um, I'm basically standing here in the uh, on a sixth floor in the office, looking out the window in the Silicon Valley. Um, it's pretty good. I, I like my office. Um, it's been it's been helpful to have everybody in the same place. But I also was thinking about potentially, you know, how would a property management business virtualize completely? Like, is that even possible? And as it happened, I got an uh, email from a listener. I'm going to read you that email. Um, his name is Nicholas, and Nicholas writes, Hello, I was wondering if you could do a podcast on anyone that owns and operates a property management business remotely. How remote can you go? Is it possible through the proper teams, technology, and connections? It is, it is a very curious topic for people getting into the business, and I was wondering if you had any available resources on the topic. Thank you. Well, thank you for writing, Nicholas. And just for you, absolutely. I basically just remembered having a conversation with my team where they say, hey, our client HomeQuick is going completely virtual. And the, I, I shot out an email right away to Mike and Noel, um, and they said, sure, absolutely, we'll jump on a podcast and talk about it. So the topic today is, can you go virtual, completely virtual, in running a property management company? And let me introduce my guests today. Uh, they're Mike and Noel, who own HomeQuick Property Management. Gentlemen, how are you today? Great, very good, very good. All right, awesome. And so you can see if you are um, um, a visual viewer of this podcast, if you look at our YouTube channel and videos, you'll see Noel, and right to the right of him, you see a couple boxes. Noel, what's up with the boxes, brother? Well, we are packing up the office and getting out of here officially. <laughs> so, so I'm moving back home. Okay, so tell me how this started. Tell me a little bit about your company, because you both also own a company called Yes Virtual, or Mike owns the company called Yes Virtual, which provides staffing uh, task-based solutions for outsourced labor for property management firms. Is that correct? Correct. So how, how did this move get started? Why, why did you just decide to get rid of an office? Just talk me through the thought process. Well, uh, for me personally, I'm our broker. I started as our leasing agent, so I do all of the kind of driving around for our property management company already. And there's tons of stuff that I do when I'm on the road. I'm already following up on leads. I'm doing pictures. I'm doing signs. I'm putting keys at a property, uh, meeting vendors. All of that kind of stuff is happening while I'm out of the office. And our property manager in-house is dealing with customer service issues, calls, those types of things, uh, with tons of support from our virtual assistants backing them up. Um, so it, with our increased use of virtual assistants, we've really minimized our staff here. And we're basically down to my property manager, Jason. Uh, Mike sits around to babysit us here. And, and I'm out in the field. Um, and we're paying a lot of money for rent. Our lease is up on this office. Uh, so we just said, hey, why don't, we, why don't we get Jason working from home and he can go out and meet tenants as needed. We've got phones set up, computers set up. Um, we're all of it. We've got very good software and systems and processes so that everybody can stay in the loop. Um, we're going to save a bunch of money on our office space by just being able to be mobile and virtual 100%. Uh, Alex, just let me give, uh, add a little bit of background. We uh, leased this pro this uh, space about ten years ago, and that, that, that was in 2008. And we were everybody in Phoenix was growing dramatically. We started this company at zero and grew to about 750 homes in a couple of years. So, so, and we actually we started with 1,500 square feet. We knocked the hole in the wall of our of the adjoining suite, really surprised the current occupants, of course. Yeah, we had four property managers, six leasing agents in here. We had a full staff. And so gradually with the use, with the invention of, of certain technology in our industry, we started just reducing that staff dramatically. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I can, I can give you some ideas of what that technology is, but I'll let you direct the, you know, what you'd like to hear. At yeah, I'm very, very interested. So I'm sure listeners uh, are, that are sitting sort of on the edge of their chairs right now are the kind of folks who are either 
right now thinking about this move or potentially playing that opportunity in their head, or they're just starting a business and thinking, well, can I just go virtual from the beginning? So yeah, talk us through the processes. Let's, let's kind of split everything up to pre-sale and post-sale. Um, pre-sale meaning that you are attracting a landlord, then you have this, the appointment, and then once they sign a management agreement, the servicing begins, and that's the tenants and everything. So let's talk me through the pre-sale. I think that's more of a novel um, realm. Um, does having an office give any kind of advantages to uh, signing new owners these days? You know, being here for 10 years, the, the only advantage I've really seen for our office is our address. So we attract uh, property owners that are within the vicinity of, of this office, uh, say within a five mile radius. Um, so where our office sits, they, you know, it, it may be a perception we're the expert in this area. Well, we manage, you know, a 50 mile radius from where our office is. Uh, so look, I'm, I'm happy to get those easy ones that like us just because they think, well, great, you're right down the street from the office. Ultimately, that doesn't really matter. I'm not the guy that goes and, and changes your garbage disposal. I'm not the one that goes and locks the tenant out. Uh, I go and take pictures, right? Um, and put up the sign. So us being close to the uh, house doesn't actually matter from, from our side of it. We gave the perception that we're, we're close by and experts there. But I almost never meet an owner here at the office. I meet them at their property. We walk through the house together, decide what we need to do, uh, talk about marketing, uh, discuss any repairs, those types of things. It's really rare that I have somebody ask to come to my office and sit across from my desk to talk about managing their house. It just uh, almost doesn't even make sense to do that, right? Uh, for the for the, some people, they're old school and they want to come to your office, great, that's fine. I can meet them uh, at my home office if I need to or take them to Starbucks or take them to lunch. Um, I don't need them to come in here and see my awards and the books that are on my bookshelf that I pretended that I read, right? Uh, <laughs> 99% of the time, I'm meeting them at their house and never seeing that owner again in person, almost never, until uh, management's canceled years from now and we're giving them keys back. Even in a lot of those cases, we're mailing them or they're picking them up at the house. Um, so I'm meeting the owner one time, generally in the beginning, and it's almost always at their property. Mm, that is interesting. So on the pre-sale, doesn't seem like we're losing a lot. On the SEO side uh, for the website, because you know we're running a website, and that thing, we needed a physical address to get that placement on the map pins and get opportunity. Because without a physical tie-in, it's very difficult to rank a website. And so we've done that because you have a home office, legit, right? right. And so we have the tie-in. So for those of you listening for the sales side of the equation, if you don't tie yourself to a, a real physical address, you might get problems with place, uh, ranking your website, hence getting leads and any kind of traction for the site. So that's an important point to, 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 to discuss. Have some kind of a virtual office or something, not, excuse me, not virtual office, but have some kind of physical office tie-in like uh, Knowles does um, where we can put in the, uh, anchor the address to the website. And we, we still have, look, just legally, for, we're in Arizona, everybody's got different rules. But legally, we have to have a physical address and we'll have a P.O. box that the tenants can pay rent to. We're actually going to use it as a kind of a mailbox store where the, the four or five guys that I still have that pay rent with paper, they can come in and hand it to that person and they can drop it in our box for us. So we'll still have that physical address uh, for paying rent. And then we'll have my physical address, which is actually in a better neighborhood than our offices, uh, to attract those uh, homeowners nearby. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No. Yeah. No, that's good. So, so on the pre-sale, pre-sale side, it doesn't seem like you really need a physical space, except you might get some flow from people who see you driving by, see your sign, something like that. But uh, that is probably minimal. I well, think. Alex, in the 10 years we've been here, that may have happened once or twice. We do have a sign on a, on a pedestal or a monument outside and it's well, our, our office is well uh, assigned. But it's only happened about twice that somebody walked by or drove by and said, hey, that's a property management company. I think I'll, I need property management. So not a real big issue for us. Yeah, a lot more often we get people coming in trying to sell us their uh, tickets to the Suns games and charitable causes and uh, maybe get us, you know, ask if we can clean the office. So, so you, a lot more often than an owner stopping by. So you get solicitors. Yeah, be, be careful with that with that tapping. No, I know you're a passionate guy. But you know what I mean? It just comes through the mic. I'm just being, I'm just being kind to the listeners because really I, I do that too. <laughs> but just an FYI. So um, Mike, let's go, let's go to the next phase. 
So it's not going to cost your company any opportunities. In fact, it might be even advantageous. You said better neighborhood will rank you in a better area for your website. That might be better. Um, let's go post sale. The contract is signed. What do you have to do? Let's walk us through the processes you have in place that do not require a physical address. Well, we, um, we certainly, I like to shout out, we're very new implementers of our website that you provided, your one partner website. We've seen increased activity. You know, we've, we've only recently implemented, so we really have high hopes. So we went to your PM Growth Conference in, uh, in uh, San Diego earlier this year, and we're really believers in, uh, in the uh, They Ask, You Answer, the Marcus Sheridan. Uh, uh, and we've, so we've got a very transparent website brings in the leads we connect it to lead simple no and that automate pretty much automates the sales process and actually the post follow-up process and so those are just two examples of things that uh, software is that just streamline our process and uh, and well, don't require us to be in a physical office for, for any reason yeah and when i'm meeting an owner at their property and we're finalizing the sale i almost never have them fill out paperwork we send it to them through docusign so we get it back in an email. As soon as it comes back in, my property manager and our virtual assistants can upload it into our software system. Um, I can send the pictures from my phone. Uh, you know, I don't have to come back to the office to scan anything. I hang a lockbox, put a key in there. A rekey guy comes around, puts it on one of our keys. Um, so I'm not having to run back to the office to make keys or anything like that. There's really nothing I need to come back to the office for, except to you know hand out a couple of high fives if we sign up a new owner. Hmm. So what about placing tenants? Now, uh, sometimes I hear people um, maybe interview tenants in, in office. People come in and apply for properties there. Does that happen? How, how do you solve that? We, we do most of our uh, application and tenant screening uh, virtually as well. So we're going to get copies of their IDs, uh, all of their background info. We're going to review all the paperwork. And then we're going to have a conversation with them on the phone. Um, even with our with our office uh, presence, we generally only meet the tenants for the first time when they come in to sign. We're not going to their house. We're not driving them around for lunch. We're not driving around showing properties because we do auto show uh, with lock boxes, uh, automated lock boxes. So an agent that's driving around, uh, they'll get to know the tenant a little bit better just because of their process. We weren't doing that anyway. Um, so now for signing, again, we can email out the lease. They can sign it via DocuSign. And now we're going to meet them at the property to hand over keys and immediately do a pre-move and walkthrough while we're there. And alternatively, that will evolve to where, you know, when they came to the office to review the lease and sign, uh, we'll replace that with a bit with a video that just reviews the lease with no talking about the same important points in the lease that he would if they came in, and we'll deliver the keys in the lockbox at the house. So uh, very soon, we'll never see that tenant, uh, although we we'll talk to that tenant multiple times and, and interface with them. They do not have to come into the office. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. I wanted to take just two minutes of your time and say thank you to our sponsor, a company who makes this podcast a reality. That's Four and Half, my company. We do marketing for property management companies. We've done it for the last seven years. And the latest innovation we're introducing is guaranteed plans. That's right. We, we're able to guarantee the performance of our marketing and website services to you if you hire four and a half to do both your marketing and the website. It all starts with a thorough business performance review where we really take a deep look into your business, SEO, uh, business practices, your uh, identify current up gaps and areas of opportunity, and then figure out how to close them for you. Then we're gonna guarantee a specific outcome in terms of results. And if that aligns with your goals for the business, we can sign you up for this guarantee plan and deliver the results to you or work for free. If you have any, uh, if you would take, take a further look at this, go to fourandhalf.com, hit pricing, and take a look at our guaranteed plans. Thank you, let's get back to the show. All right. So break down the systems you are using for uh, successfully placing tenants in, in, in a reasonable amount of time for people who are listening who may not be using uh, or, or you know, not aware of, of the kind of the, the technology stack that you guys deploy. What, what does that look like, guys? 
Well, the uh, it started years ago, and, and when we had when we were much larger, our seven seven hundred fifty homes, we had about six or seven leasing agents that Noel had to manage, and of course we distributed leads by zip code, very complicated. But um, with the invention of uh, it, the technology, the lockbox technology, and and we all know most of those uh, players, Show Mojo, Tenet Turner, and Brentley, et cetera. We actually uh, bought lockbox ourselves and had and developed our own software to do it. Oh. But, um, um, but but we certainly believe in those technologies. They're a great way to automate that process to keep uh, you from going out and showing every house, right, Mo? Right. And and uh, and then of course we we make extensive use of our virtual assistants to uh, whenever somebody uh, when somebody needs to. Uh, have direct contact, the question answered. That can be answered by an unlicensed person. We have to be very careful about that. Um, that pretty much automates that process. We just don't, we don't have to be well, in this office. It, it's, so they apply on our website. We use property where it goes right through that system. Once they apply, our virtual assistants immediately follow up, uh, send a notification telling them the info that we're going to need, do a couple of calls to collect copies of IDs, pay stubs, those types of things. Once that's all in, they tell us, hey, this application's ready. And then uh, Jason, my property manager, or myself will review it. Um, uh, that's the time that we'll either automatically deny it or we'll call the applicant and start having our pre-leasing discussion. Uh, what do you want? When are you going to move in? How many pets? All those types of things. But we don't even talk to them until we've got everything in on their application uh, and that we know that, that they're a potential prospect. They're qualified. So then we start talking to them. So we save a lot of time up front by not even really talking to the tenants. They get auto showings, they apply. If they look qualified, then we start that conversation. So let's talk a little bit about the yes virtual aspect because you said virtual assistants are helping you put complete the application because I bet that sucks up a lot of time back and forth. People, you know, submit a wrong copy, ID expired, whatever. Like I, I'm, I'm sure it happens all the time. Um, how, the, do your... Um, yes, virtual people uh, are trained in that specific element, or you are. How, how would someone who's listening, you know, get that solved for themselves? Well, we want most of the info to be on the website and available before a tenant ever presses a button, clicks on a link, or definitely before they put in any uh, uh, credit card information to pay for an application fee, right? But we all know tenants are going to have tons of questions, they're going to want to go through stuff again. Our virtual assistants can answer basic questions, but ultimately they say, if, if it, you feel that you qualify based on the terms on our website, and this is a house you want to see, we'll set you up with a viewing, let them go see the house. Once they see it, if they feel they're qualified based on uh, our requirements on our website, then they apply. Again, if it's an automatic denial, we'll just send them an automatic denial letter. If they're qualified, then I'll get on the phone and start talking to them or Jason, my property manager. But we save you know, so much time by not talking to either just tire kickers, people that aren't qualified, uh, people that are shopping around for uh, moving three months from now. I'm not wasting any time talking to them. They're going to our website, seeing the house, spending some of my virtual assistance time only when they're actually doing the application and we're chasing down documents. So we save a ton of those pointless uh, conversations with people who want to tell us their life story, why their credit's bad, why they're moving. We avoided all of that stuff. Uh, until they've actually seen a house they're ready to move into and have applied it to prove that they qualify. But uh, just to further the Yes Virtual concept, we uh, Yes Virtual it, we, it exists. It's a company of ours in the Philippines, and we have a data center. They all reside in one place, uh, about 50 people, and they do so. Uh, I mean, it's evolved my company. I was able to handle uh, you know, when we were at 750 homes, just just not hire new staff. They do everything in the business that can be done remotely, which is most things, interleases, inter, uh, vendor invoices. Uh, you know, we've done some things for you too. So it just reduces the amount of, of people that we have to have locally. And of course, it's all done virtually. So, uh, and, and it, as you know, we do uh, these services for a lot of your clients and our clients around the country. Right. And so if someone's listening, they're a property management company and they want, they don't know how to start with virtual assistance. It sounds really appetizing what you're saying. Like it sounds like it will simplify their lives so they can focus on growing the business and not running around qualifying tenants. Um, well, how would they start? Like, do, do you provide trained personnel, Mike, or do they need to train them? How does that work? 
Basically, we, we have an HR machine in the Philippines. And so we, we recruit people, we train them on everything property management. I mean, they understand all of the major softwares. They understand uh, most of uh, all the processes that are admin. So they're very well trained and we provide them to uh, clients, property manager co management companies around the country on either an as needed basis, in other words, 20 or 30 hours a week. They don't have to do anything. Uh, there are multiple people that know their tasks. They'll, so if any, you know, their job will always get done, no illnesses, no vacation days, no absences for any reason. And if they're a larger client really wants a full-time VA, somebody that they control and, and, and turn into somebody on their, we, we provide them with the full-time trained, already trained, and the client just has to adapt them to their own local needs and culture, that kind of thing. So some of the stuff that they're gonna know when they come out of, when, when we, uh, when you hire us to use them, they'll know how to do invoicing, they'll know how to open work orders, enter properties, Post HOA notices, um, do three or five day notices. Um, they'll they'll know how to run reports for lease renewals. So a lot of those types of back office admin tasks are what we've got to pre trained on, and property managers can take that load off of their staff by having us do the back office admin stuff that sets up a lot of their time. Gotcha. All right. So let me sort of map this out uh, at a three thousand view, and guys, feel free to poke if I if my understanding is incorrect. Have a have a solid, transparent website that communicates qualifications, communicates the value propositions, the pricing, everything that people can self-educate. And the society is moving that way anyway, right? So have that front-facing uh, digital office, you know, in order, in line. Have a solid software like Propertyware, Upfolio, probably building them out there that actually allows you to virtualize application process for tenants so they can view the property apply online, have a showing technology like Rently, ShowMojo, and you mentioned Tenant Turner. Tenant Turner. Uh, right. Have a showing technology so you, the people, you don't need to have a leasing agent present. Somebody wants to go see the property, they apply um, and go see the property once they qualify. Now, to, for that qualification, hire a virtual assistant, either part-time or full-time, depending on your situation, to field those calls qualify people and follow the processes to make sure the tenants are, are taken care of, served, um, and they, they can see the property. And then you turn that into from application to lease. Um, that we haven't covered yet. So from application to lease, do you use any technology there? Do you use any, uh, what, what do you need to do that to solve that? Well, once, once all the uh, application information is collected, it'll be uploaded into our software system. Then my property manager or myself can review it. Uh, discuss terms, and then, yeah, we go back to having our virtual assistants create the lease and send it out through DocuSign. So it's generally, at that point, it's one, maybe two conversations with the tenant and one or two with the owner, just solidifying the terms, the signing date, and when you're bringing in some money. Um, the lease goes out through DocuSign. We're going to have tenants pick up their keys at the house through the lockbox. Uh, we're going to have them uh, use our inspection tools, the inspector, to do their pre-move-in. Uh, that way it's already uploaded. They can take their pictures, walk around. We can still do that as needed if we've got somebody that can't. But essentially, I mean, we're talking a couple of phone calls, not face-to-face -face meetings, not a bunch of trips back and forth to the property. Hmm. And so uh, just to qualify this for folks that are listening, how many placements do you do in your busy season, like a month? What does your average, like July, look like? Well, we can do 20 to 30 in a month when we're, when we're really cranking. Uh, so the process, the they, process is scalable to, to, do you think you could do 40 if you want, if you wanted to, I mean, this, or do you think, do you feel there's a breaking point there somewhere? If I had the houses, I could do a hundred. I mean, we just need to add more, more virtual assistants and I would need more property managers to scale for somebody to deal with the negotiations and those types of things. But I'll have a lot less staff than I would if I was doing this all on my own. Alex, to get to your bigger point, I mean, we considered this deeply. I, I certainly did. Um, we, I, I believe this is scalable to, to enormous size. I believe we can be 2,000 homes and be totally virtual or larger. Um, now, there might be some considerations, uh, you know, that we, once we got to that size, but I, I do believe this is a scalable model. And I mean, there are a lot of people taking, getting, getting deep into our industry, real estate, like Zillow. And I mean, there's a lot of people that are virtual that are encroaching on our space. I know we can do it on a, 
transfer or a, a virtual basis. Hmm. What was the most difficult element of giving up the physical office? Like, there's got to be some some stuff that is just un like you had to give up um, in order to give up the office. Let's let's go through those. Like, what are the most difficult thing you had to rethink in order to give up the office? Well, probably from a management aspect, being able to see and just reach out and touch and talk to your employees and your staff, right? To having everybody in one hub. Um, for us, for uh, we've got so much stuff going virtual that our staff is very small right now anyways. Uh, but that will be harder for somebody who's got a bigger office, who's got three or four or up to 10 people on staff, to not be able to see and be around them Every day uh, could be a tough transition. Well, you, and you also have to be confident that they're going to work from home, that you know that they're uh, being productive. So we take advantage of technology like this video, uh, and we will conduct our meetings. We have once a week staff meetings now when, uh, while, while we've been in this office. We'll do it like this with a with a with something like, uh, you've got, I think we're using Ring Central, but other, other technologies like Zoom, many people use that. So we'll have meetings so that people can keep on, you know, that we, that we can actually see each other's face and stay in touch. Yeah, stay in touch, and then we'll maybe once every couple of weeks we'll go have lunch or something like that. But uh, so we, we, you know, the personal touch is important. And but uh, one thing, I mean, Noel's going to love the or the people that are currently in the office will love the fact that I'm not walking around micromanaging all the time. So I think I don't think anybody's going to miss this office. It's not like there's an emotional attachment to it. We'll. Uh, I mean, when we walk out the door the last time, you know, there will be no tears. We just happen to save the, in this case, about four thousand dollars a month for for this brick and mortar office. Yeah, that's quite significant. So, a um, little bit of wisdom that I've sort of gathered over the years. Uh, one is I've heard a podcast on a company called Automatic, and you wouldn't like guess what they do, but actually, they, they actually make WordPress. Right, so that's the company that that made WordPress, which runs like eighty percent of the web, right? <laughs> um, as a as a sort of website technology. Um, but look, um, they are fully virtual, and there are six hundred people. And the podcast was illuminating in the way that they are able to maintain the culture, the heart, the purpose of the organization, uh, being completely virtual. So they're there are things like, um, you know, they do a, a quarterly uh, meeting uh, or maybe it's an annual. I don't remember exactly the specifics, but they have very well pu- uh, put together methodology for keeping people engaged in the culture. But everybody works from home. They're saving tons of money and 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 headache for, for employees commuting. And when I spoke to Buildium ex-CEO, uh, Mike Montero, um, you know, I asked him this question. It's like, hey, Mike, what do you think about you know, going fully virtual for a technology company like Buildium. And I think, so what he told me is like, Alex, I think, I think for us, it's either we do it all the way, we go fully virtual and everybody works from home or you have an office and everybody works in the office. It's very difficult to have it both ways. Did did you find that before? Because I mean, what was your experience half and half in it? Well, I mean, Historically, for this type of business, uh, I was always one of the outside people because I was in sales, either uh, doing leasing, home sales, or signing up new owners, uh, you know, the BDM. So um, I was always one of the people that was in the office 20% of the time. So I lose out on a little bit of the office click and the office culture. And then I'm sure the people that are, you know, uh, pinned down to a desk all day long would like to be able to get out and go to the house every now and then and run around and uh, go do pictures and, and get out of their, their cubicle or their space a little bit. So um, there's always in this business people that are outside and people that are inside. Um, and, and they may share a little time with both, but there's there's always been that aspect of it. Are you planning, uh, Mike, have you have you thought through any kind of uh, events or company gatherings where beyond going beyond just virtual you're actually physically present for some kind of celebration you know a a company-wide meeting things like that well next week we're all going to gather for our annual holiday lunch we're just going to go to a mexican food restaurant we do we do that every year we've done that even when we were all in the office but so we'll do those types of functions and uh, like i said i think maybe once every couple months we'll we'll get together for a 
like this or this or that, so everybody can connect and, and, and we'll, see. we'll get out and do golf or uh, or send the girls to get their nails done or the guys if they want uh, on people's birthdays at other events like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, this was uh, this was very interesting. So I think I think what we've covered is some of what um, our listeners would want to know about running a virtual company. But I think I, I think I think you gave them a taste. But would you? Um, how would they contact you, Mike? If they had a question, uh, needed help with potentially VA or a process that they were thinking about, and they want to run it by you, since you guys are living it and doing it, would you be willing to take those questions? And if so, how would people reach you? Absolutely. Um, I, I'm not sure if you're going to post our contact information, but we will. Mike at home quick or, or, or actually Noel at home quick or Noel uh-huh. at yes virtual. Our website's yesvirtual.com. Right. And there's a contact form there, phone numbers, all that stuff. Uh, but generally, they'll talk to me for, for the introduction part. Mike will be happy to jump on you know, a business discussion uh, call with anyone. Um, as well, but owner to owner, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I talked to him about, you know, what the thought process is and what the risks might be. Um, I don't think the risks are much, and I'm certainly not the first person in our industry do, to do this. Um, many of, you know, there are at least, you know, I can name a couple clients that, and maybe your clients too, that are also virtual and, and larger than us. So, so there are people that do that. And of course I consulted with them. Maybe, you know, I just wanted to see what kind of pitfalls and I just couldn't see any pitfalls other than the possible using this as a marketing piece, this building, which it just hasn't been a marketing piece for us. And we love sharing ideas. Advice is always free. Uh, we love sharing ideas with other property managers across the country um, and either hijacking, stealing, or borrowing their ideas. But look, we're happy to tell people what's worked for us and, and what we've heard from other people that, that work as well. Fantastic, guys. I really appreciate your time today. So go to yesvirtual.com, contact one of these fine gentlemen, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect and admiration for everything you guys are doing. You're awesome. I see your Philippines team is thriving and, and you're growing that business. Very good. It's been a pleasure. And, yes, we use the VS Virtual. And one birdie told me that we might have a little process that you guys can help us solve. Um, so we might be back in touch because we've solved something. Now we got to solve it again. Um, so that that's cool. Our experience with VS Virtual has been great. You know, this is really um, – this has really been been a good, um, I think, good interview to get uh, educated on a possibility. But I think there's a lot more there, and Mike and Noel are willing to talk you through it. Um, so, gentlemen, again, thank you for your time. Uh, those of you listening, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Alex. Thank